Paul Slater, welcome yes. to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah, you, you've entertained your audience uh, this afternoon. Thank um, you. And you entertain many, really. Uh, British quirkiness, it's been described as. But you yeah. describe your, your illustrations uh, and your paintings as follies. Why, why, oh, why you follies? Oh, you found that out, did you? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if the illustrations are follies in the, sense, in the same sense, because they're done for a reason. There's a purpose to them, and, uh, and they're paid for and everything. But uh, when I work for myself, I do regard them as follies because... Normally, I'd spend no more than a day on a painting. <coughs> I can easily spend s six months or a year or two years on a painting, and sometimes paint it out afterwards because you know it doesn't work. And um, it's it's easily done, but I will get disgruntled with a picture I've spent two years on. And uh, so, if they do survive, they're, they're yeah. follies. I see, you're right? Yeah. Yes. Just uh, like the Victorians, uh, yeah. almost. Uh. Uh, they're there to, um, to puzzle, uh, as, as a source of puzzlement and amusement, hopefully. Uh, and, and not much else. Or are they? Well, that, that, <laughs> it's a very good point, because uh, there's, uh, um, I've looked at a lot of your uh, illustrations, um, yeah. and uh, there's, there's definitely a, a, a satirical side to them. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I just wondered, sort of, you know, <coughs> um, almost irreverent, uh, but yes. um, do the people, they're obviously targeted at somebody, does that, does that person know? Uh, have you ever, ever had um, anybody take exception, or, or, or is there just Paul Slater, who knows? It's probably just me, but I think one or two of the writers that I work with haven't taken kindly to my uh, renderings. Of yeah. their, uh, you know, appearance. That's probably true. Um, but I've never had death threats or anything like that no. so far. And, and and there's there's always something underlying them. I take it that that's what you, you know you and and in, if there is something underlying, which I'm assuming there must yeah. be, how, how do you come up with that? Uh, because because they're so clever. Uh, you you seem to like this. Um, period, if you like, from the First World War to about the 1960s. I do, I do like uh, that. What, 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 what is it about that <coughs> uh, well, uh, period? It's, it's, it's not well documented, um, that style of painting. and Nobody would know who did it. It's synonymous, by and large. Um, but it, it's instantly familiar to anybody looking on. And, and in being familiar, it's... It's a good place to start from if you're going to twist the reality a bit. You know, if it's too out there, um, people won't connect with it quite the same. And uh, I like the colours from that period too. I've learnt a lot from looking at those old advertising signs and that, how they use mixed their colours. Yes, because they are very similar to the, the, the adverts of yeah. that period. Yeah. And I love things like that. And uh, they would use purples and oranges to make uh, shadows, you know, which, and, and be very warm. And that warmth is also another thing that I try and use, yeah. you know, to make it a thing accessible to people, an instantly likeable sort of thing. And, and, and when, you, when you're uh, producing uh, what are masterpieces, if I'm honest, um, <laughs> <laughs> might be, I, I think they are. Yes. Um, where, where do you start? Do you start with the joke? Do you start with the image? Is it, is it you know, what, what, chicken and egg? Is it, is it uh, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of everything, but I find um, I'll have an idea. Um, is that a visual idea? Or, visual or, or yeah, you, I'll, I'll be sketching, just scribbling ideas down. And, um, but for instance, I did a drawing of a, of a cricketer with his bat going for the, the uh, Yes, I've seen the one. Crease. Yes. yes. And, um, and originally I thought, wouldn't it it'd be really nice if there were lots of, um, lots of really nicely painted birds just, you know, resting upon him. Uh, and I thought that, it made me laugh, you see. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll, if I get a chance, I'll do that. But then I was doing the book on, uh, that I did about the First World War. And uh, I'd got a fellow, Tommy, running through no man's land. And, it, and then I thought, yeah, those birds would look great on him, you know. Because, yeah. uh, not for any particular reason, other than 
he's in motion and they and they represent something very um, uh, gentle you know in a, in a horrible landscape type of thing and um, and then when I'd done it uh, people give their interpretation of it and I think well yeah maybe you're right maybe it does say something about um, destroying nature and all that sort of thing well, but it wasn't really the intention to start with. No, no I, was, I, was, I was thinking that a, a lot of the, the work looks political, um, yeah. and it may well be, but um, the, the work is open, if you like, to misinterpretation, because yeah. it, it's, it, it's very clever, but it's in the, in the mind, yours, yeah. uh, of the person who, who drew it. Yeah. Um, do you get a, a lot of misinterpretation? Do you, do you get, or do you get people who, who interpret things and... And, and I, I, not how do you cope with that, but do you think, oh no, you've got that wrong? Uh, or do no, you just, because I, I think or is it there for that purpose? I think it is there for that purpose, and I, I'd never had an agenda in that sense. You know, I don't. Except, I mean, when I worked for political magazines, then you know the agenda's set, isn't it? So I just respond to that. And uh, but in my in the stuff I create. Um, it's it's more there is a, an element of mischief in it, in in the sense that <laughs> I like the thought of doing something very silly, but doing it very well. Do you know what I mean? I do. And I saw something. I think John Cleese said it about humour. He said it's it was like on Monty Python. They said sometimes we would take a very small thing and make it big, and that was the you know that was the. Mm. Or we'll take a big thing, important thing, and make it very small, you know. <laughs> and it, it instantly, to me, that explained, you know, a large part of the humour there. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I appreciated uh, knowing that because I thought, yeah, I think that's what I do, really. Because I'm not trying to be funny most of the time. You know, I think they just, they do look funny. That, that's, it's, it's rare that you look at one and not smile. You, you mentioned earlier uh, to me that... Uh, you, you enjoyed the Monty Python uh, yeah. series. Um, yeah, we're going back a few years now. Yes. Um, was that a form of inspiration? Or, you know, did you, did well, you take anything from that? I tell you what, it, uh, the first one that was ever on was on the night before I went to art school for the first time, which was great, you know, because I was kind of a bit worried about going to art school. And I watched this thing and I thought, uh, uh, that type of humour. It, it wasn't the usual sort of Arthur Raines type of thing where there's a gag at the end, which is usually quite weak. It was just a free form of, of um, ideas in, yeah. it, in a way. And, that, yeah. and so it, it was great. And going back, going to art school the next day and everybody talking about it, was, mm. it did set, it did set uh, me on a roll. And Terry Gilliam's um, animations, you know, the way he used flat old photos and things like that, I think that still is in my head, to an extent. Mm -hmm. well, and when you do, um, uh, when, when you you were given a, a political, uh, uh, you know, commission, if you like, yeah. uh, you, this was the joke, or, or, or this was the issue. Mm -hmm. You had to make a joke out of it. How quickly do your thoughts come for something like that? Well, a lot of the time that, that's set already. You know, they'll say we want it sort of like this, and it, it's I have to make it look nice and uh, you know understandable in that. So really. I'm more of an illustrator in that respect than a cartoonist. Mm. <coughs> Once I was offered a job um, with uh, to be like a regular cartoonist of the Daily Express, and it, the fellow I, I was working with was very insistent that I did it. And he was a great bloke, and I, he, s he said, I think you'll do a really good job of this. But in my heart, I knew I wasn't a cartoonist. I couldn't mm. visualize wake up, waking up in the morning reading the paper, and then having to come up with mm. ideas. It's just not the way my mind works. I, I like things to sort of grow organically in a way. And I'll start things that, that mean one thing, and then they grow into something else as I'm doing them. And, it, and that's more so a pictorial thing, you know. And uh, very often the idea gets lost, and it just becomes about it moves. the pain. Yeah. And, uh, the characters I get, mm -hmm. and I kind of like it when things don't mean anything, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but yeah, but the political thing, like I say, mostly they'd say, "Look, we want a picture of uh, Clegg, you know, as Robin Hood or something." 
and um, so that's what I attempt to do, to make it look kind of funny and whatever, ludicrous. You've been described as uh, one of the UK's top ten really, uh, yeah. illustrators, well, the Independent. It was, yeah. Um, that was, or was it the Independent on Sunday? One of the yeah, two. Yeah, one of those. Um, and how does that sit with a, a, a quiet man like yourself? Well, it's flattering, but it, I have to say, when I saw that and the list of people on it and the people missing from it, who are my particular heroes, you know, mm. Mick Brownfield, I mean, you know, he's, the, he's the, the governor of illustrators. And I can't even stand in the shadow, you know, this man. Still to this day turns out the top class illustration. I've always been a kind of reluctant illustrator in a sense. It, you know, I, I do it because I can do it. I don't, I don't really have a big passion for it. So I felt a bit of a fraud, you know, being put in with this company of people. And um, I'm glad I've actually got a chance to say that to somebody after all these years. Because I don't think I'm the best illustrator in the country by a long shot. You know, I, I, might, be, I might be good at some things, but sometimes I think I'm a pretty crappy illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't show you the stuff that's in my chamber of horrors, you know, so I've got a garage full of that stuff. <laughs> the University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.